Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today I would like to uh, to talk about uh, definite integrals uh, in application to calculating the length of a curve. Um, this lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics for high school students and uh, teenagers. You can find it on unizor.com. If you watch this lecture from YouTube or any other website, um, I would suggest to actually to switch to this one because um, every lecture has uh, very detailed notes and uh, you can take exams for uh, those topics where it's available so it's much more functionality and there is some other functionality on the website um, okay so length of the curve first of all we have to um, define our curve what is the curve well, um, from a um, calculus perspective, the curve, um, let's consider the curves on the plane, because the curves in, this, in, in a three-dimensional space uh, will be exactly equivalent to this. So let's talk about the curve on a plane. So you have some kind of a coordinate plane, and you have some kind of a curve. How can we define it? Well, in this particular case, the, uh, the, the curve like this cannot be defined as a function. Now, this curve can be defined as a function of x. Now, in this case, a uh, much better way to represent the curve is through two functions, which depend on certain parameter. So these two functions define a point on a curve based on certain parameter t, where t uh, is uh, from some kind of an interval from a to b. Now, this particular case is actually a particular case of this case. Why? Because you can always say that in this case, my x is actually t. So x of t is equal to t and y, since y of, uh, um, uh, of t is a uh, function of x and x is the same as t, you can say this. So this is a particular case of a general dependency. Um, maybe I will talk about this a little later, but in any case, it doesn't really mean much if we will consider this, if we will consider that. So. We are talking about the curve defined parametrically as two functions, and we obviously assume that these two functions, um, x of t and uh, y of t, are uh, smooth enough, at least differentiable. Di differentiable. Um, next, next we are talking about the um, length of this particular curve. So as t is changing from a to b my point is moving from here to here. Now, as in the case of the area under the curve, which actually was the way to introduce definite integrals, we will do very, very similar thing. So let's divide this particular interval from A to B into um, A different, into a n different parts. So we start from this point, and then we will have these division points. From A to B. So my first is A, my last is B, and everything in between. Um, now, as we define these breakpoints um, uh, on interval A, B, correspondingly, we define breakpoints on our curve. So this point would be x of ti comma y of ti. So every ti corresponds to a point uh, on the curve parametrically uh, defined by these two functions. So breaking uh, my interval of argument t from a to b into n pieces, we uh, 
break our curve along its going into independent uh, little pieces. Okay, now, if the pieces are small enough, so if this n is large enough and the distance between different uh, breakpoints is small, each particular thing from here to here can be approximated with a straight line. And obviously approximation is better if these points are closer to each other. Now, if my functions x of t and y of t are smooth enough, this curve would be smooth enough. And for a smooth curve, it makes sense to replace the length of this arc with a straight line. So we are talking about a straight line from point x uh, of t i minus 1, y of t i minus 1. So this point to a next point, which is x of t i, comma y of t i. So this is a small piece it's a straight line between these two uh, between these two points all right now the total length of the curve is obviously a sum of these so first let's just calculate the length of this small piece let's call it l i so what's the length between two points? Well, we obviously know this from the previous. If you have one point and another point, the length is, by Pythagorean theorem, is um, the square of the length, let's put square, is equal to sum of this, which is difference between these two abscissas, which is between this and this. So it's x of ti minus x of ti minus 1 square plus, plus this square, which is different between ordinates, right? Square. And Li by itself, obviously, is the square root of this, right? Um, it would be uh, easier for me uh, if I will do it slightly differently. Equals 2. Let's divide and multiply by Ti minus Ti minus 1 square. So what will be is x of Ti minus x of Ti minus 1 divided by ti minus ti minus 1 square plus y of ti minus y of ti minus 1 divided by ti minus ti minus 1 square and multiplied by ti minus ti minus 1 square, right? So that would be the right thing. I just multiplied by this and divided by the same thing. So now, as my um, number of intervals I increasing, and uh, the distance between breakpoints is decreasing. What is this? What does it remind us? Well, it obviously reminds us the definition of the derivative at point i, right? And if I will summarize, if I will have total length of the curve, which is approximately equals to sum of Li, i from 1 to n, that would be sum of i 1 to n, square root 
Now this is square, right? So I have to do the square root. Square root of what is this? This is delta x of t i divided by delta t i square plus this is the increment of the function divided by increment of the attribute, right? So that's what derivative is. That's what we're going to. Delta y of t i divided by delta t i square Now, this is the end of the square, because this, since this is the square and I'm doing square root, it goes ti minus ti minus 1, which is actually delta ti. So, as our now, this is actually a Riemann sum, if you remember the definition of the definite integrals. This is the function. This is a function. Right? Some kind of a function. And this is the delta ti. And we are summarizing them. This is the definition of the integral which means that as n goes to infinity and the length of this uh, largest interval is diminishing to, uh, to zero, the limit of this is equal to real length, which is equal to integral from a to b. Now all the different delta ti's are um, extending from a to b, right, of this function, which is square root of uh, a derivative of x, right, this is derivative of x square plus derivative of y by t square dt. So this is basically straight from the definition of the definite integral, where under definite integral, we have this function. Well, basically, that's it. That's the formula for the length of the curve uh, defined parametrically by functions x and y, depending on parameter t, which is going from a to b. Now, by the way, let me return back to case when the function, when, when, when the curve is actually a graph of the function, and we can have something like this. As I was saying, we can re re replace it with x of t is equal to t, and y of t is equal to f of t, right? Well, t is actually the same as x, so to speak, in this case. So, this derivative of t by t is equal to 1, and this derivative is obviously whatever it is, in which case our formula would be instead of this, I will have 1, and instead of this, I will have this derivative of the function by, by x, actually. Same thing as by x. We, we just change the argument from t to x, but that's the same thing. x can serve as a parameter in this case. That's what it is or you can rename it to t, doesn't really matter. Letter doesn't matter because these letters are all the same. I can put x here or anything or any other letter, right? Okay, so we cover this and we cover that and we have a formula, a universal formula for all parametrically um, uh, defined curves. And I would like to have a couple of examples right now with this formula and see if, if I will have some reasonable um, answers. My, now, my first example is really trivial. Let's consider I have a circle of a radius r. Now, I would like to define it parametrically and calculate its lengths and see if I will get 2 pi r. All right? Okay, now, um, what, what can be a parameter? A parameter can be an angle. Let's call it t. 
and t would be from 0 to 2 pi, right? To get the complete circle. Now, what is my x of t and y of t? In this case, well, x of t is r cosine. So the length would be integral from 0 to 2 pi square root of now my x of t is r cosine so derivative would be okay r cosine of t that's my x of t and derivative would be r sine of t with a minus sign right so i need square so it will be r square sine square of t now my y is r sine t so y is r sine t and its derivative is r cosine of t square would be r square cosine of t square dt and what is it equal to? Well, obviously, r square can go outside of these and outside of the uh, square root. It's a constant, so I will have to put r. So what will be inside under square root? There will be sine square plus cosine square, which is 1. So I will have integral from 0 to 2 pi of dt. Now, what's the... Well, 1 times dt. Now, what is the... Uh, indefinite integral, we will use the formula in Newton Leibniz. Uh, what is uh, indefinite integral of just dt, of, of 1 dt? Well, that's t, right? So we have to put t from 2 pi to 0, which is when we substitute 2 pi, we will have 2 pi. When we substitute 0, it would be minus 0. That's what formula. Uh, of Newton Leibniz is, and we have 2 pi r, which is not a surprise, obviously. Now, um, can it serve as a uh, proof that the length of the um, circle is equal to 2 pi r? No, that's not a proof. It's just a confirmation, if you wish, because uh, we are talking about 2 pi, what is 2 pi? I mean, we cannot really use all these trigonometric properties without first defining what is a circle, what is the length of the circle, what is the angle, etc., etc. So, all that machinery should still stay. This cannot be a proof that the length of the circle is 2 pi. It's a confirmation. Okay? Okay. Now, let's go to another problem little bit more interesting and less trivial. Okay. My function is... Okay, let me change my... Okay, my function is x is equal to r cosine cube of t and y is equal to r sine cube of t well first of all yeah and t is from 0 to 2 pi well first of all what is this curve how does it look well let's just first determine four main points when when t is equal to 0 pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2 so it will be like this if my um, if my angle is 0 then x is equal to r times uh, cosine of 0 is 1 so we will have r sine of 0 is 0 so we will have 0. So this would be r. 
Now, when angle is equal to pi over 2, cosine is 0, sine is 1, so it would be 0 r, which is this. Now, if it's if t is equal to pi, my cosine would be minus one, right? Cosine. So zero pi over two, three pi over two, and two pi. So that's my no, that's wrong. This is pi. This is 3 pi over 2, and this is 2 pi. So cosine is minus 1, and cube would be minus 1, so it's minus r. That's my x coordinate. And sine of pi is still zero, so it will be this point. And finally, three pi over two. Um, three pi over two. Uh, cosine is zero, and sine is minus one, so it would be zero and minus one, so it would be minus r. So these are four points on my curve. Now, how about in between? Well. Um, if you do it a little bit more um, carefully, you will see that the curve would be something like this. And it's called asteroid. So, we need to find the length of this asteroid. Well, let me simplify the job a little bit. I will find only one quarter of this and then multiply by four. So, right now, I will do it not from 0 to 2 pi, but I will do it from 0 to 2 pi over 2. That's just easier, because I don't have to be concerned about minus sign, plus sign, that's too much bother. It's much easier to do this, and then um, multiply by 4. So, um, the derivative is equal to r, 3 cosine squared, that's because it's a power function and the chain rule the cosine uh, is uh, derivative of cosine is uh, minus sine so it would be minus 3 r cosine square of t sine of t now this is uh, 3 r sine square of t times cosine of t. Okay. Now, remember our formula? Square root of this square plus this square. Right? So, um, obviously, 3r square would be 9r square. We can um, factor it out and get it out from the square root, so it would be 3r still. So we're talking about integral from 0 to pi over 2. 3r would be outside of this integral. And under the square root, I will have cosine in the fourth of t, sine square of t, plus sine to the fourth of t, uh, cosine square of t dt. So that's what our formula does. This is the square of the first derivative of by x, this is the square of derivative of y, and 3r would be just outside as a factor and then outside of the square and outside of the integral. Alright, fine, equals to 3r integral from 0 to pi over 2 now, obviously, if you will factor out sine square, cosine square from both of them, what would be remaining? Cosine square plus sine square, right? Which is 1. So that's why I can omit it, and that's what will, will be here. 
Now, what is this? Now, since I'm from 0 to pi over 2, sine and cosine are non-negative, so I can just um, uh, cancel this square root and, and these squares, and I will have just this. Right? And uh, there are many ways to do it. For instance, one of the ways is uh, sine times cosine is a half of the sine of the double angle. Um, and that's how I do it in notes. Um, here, uh, I can just a little, uh, I, I can change it a little bit because notice that the uh, uh, derivative of sine is a cosine. So this and this is equal to d of sine of t, right? And now I can replace actually this integral with integral 2r. Let's substitute sine of t is equal to u, let's say. So it would be u times du. And what's the uh, uh, limits of integration uh, when 0 is uh, if t is equal to 0 sine is equal to 0 so u is equal to 0 when um, t is equal to pi over 2 sine of pi over 2 is 1 so it's 1 and this is equal to 3r what's my um, derivative of u it's u squared divided by 2 right so it's u squared divided by 2 from 1 to 0. So the result is uh, 3r, and when I'm substituting u, instead of u1, I will have 1 half. 0 will have 0, so I will have 1 half minus 0. So it's 1 half. So it's 3r divided by 2. 3r divided by 2. Now this is only a quarter. So I have to multiply it by 4, and the total length would be 6r. And that's the end of it. So these are a couple of examples where the formula, like this one, for the length of the curve uh, can be used, and uh, it basically produces very easy result. Well, easy in case you can obviously integrate it. In this case, it's easy. Obviously, I um, came up with relatively easy of integration. Uh, in some cases, I mean, if you want, for instance, to calculate the lengths of, I don't know, some complicated curve, like a sine, for instance, it, it, it's a curve and you can obviously parametrically um, give it, that might actually get into a little bit more problems because the integral would be not so nice like in this particular case. All right, that's it. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com. Other than that, well, that's it. Thanks very much and good luck.